Hello everyone, welcome back to Introduction to Cyber Threat Intelligence. This time, we will be giving a fast review on main points that you have to know before diving deep into the cyber threat intelligence realm. This video will try to give a nice start to main concept that might be used in the models ahead. So, what are we waiting for? Let's start! Okay, first things first, what is the exact definition of cyber threat intelligence? Well, NIST gives a very accurate definition by stating that threat intelligence is threat information that has been aggregated, transformed, analyzed, interpreted, or enriched to provide the necessary context for decision-making processes. This definition is cyber threat intelligence at its core. Nonetheless, cyber threat intelligence capabilities are way more than that, and its flexibility allows for many other actions to be collected from its processes. More specifically, SANS Institute calls cyber threat intelligence as the analysis of an adversary's intent, opportunity, and capability to do harm is known. If you notice the contrast between both definitions is that one refers more to general information about threats, it gives more of a passive definition or of cyber threat intelligence. And this second one talks about an active adversary with the specific resources and capabilities that might be targeting our organization. These two concepts contain accurately the most important capabilities of cyber threat intelligence and the usual perspectives for which this unit is used. But what should we understand as cyber threat? Well, NIST also defines this term as an event or condition that has the potential for causing asset loss and the undesirable consequences or impact from such loss. Maybe this definition is a little broad when trying to define a specific thing that we're trying to protect ourselves from. But the reality is that the definition is broad because the actual thing is broad as well. Literally, anything can be a threat, from the outlet where you plug the server to power it, to the janitor in charge of cleaning the whole facility. Actually, there's a sort of funny story regarding this subject. There was one time a client called the company I worked for and stated that their servers were compromised because they restarted every day exactly at 9 a.m., and they required a deep analysis to find out why this was happening. Well, long story short, we found out that the reason their servers shut down every day at that hour was because it was the moment that the janitor entered the data center and cleaned the outlets. And how did they clean the outlet? Well, disconnecting every cable, cleaning it thoroughly, and connecting it again. Yes, that is a true story. And you may think that the threat was the janitor. Well, let me tell you, that is not true. The real threat here is the lack of awareness from companies to their personnel, and cleaning employees are often the most overlooked when it should be all the way around, since they have access to most of the places in a facility. Now, in a more serious approach, Verizon Business performs this data breach analysis every year, where they collect information about breaches and incidents of all over the world and create this very useful information. You can get very interesting insights from this report every year. You can download 2019's report from the link at the end of the slide. Well, in this data breach investigation report, DBIR, we can see how much of an impact have data breach in most organizations. From a total of 41,686 incidents analyzed in 2018, 52% of them were products of hacking actions. 69% were perpetrated by external actors. 35% were possible through phishing campaigns. 71% were financially motivated. This and a bunch of other data can give organizations a perspective of how many threats are out there and how much loss they are causing. These are not numbers created out of probability or out of trends. These are real numbers of real scenarios analyzed. This kind of information is the one that needs to be seen by organizations in order to define the importance of having accurate defenses in place. 
and how this is going to help my organization. That's what we're going to find out in this course. This and many other questions will be answered along this course when, where we can find where the Cyber Threat Intelligence Unit is placed in an organization, what is the history and purpose of Cyber Threat Intelligence in its many forms, and how could you put all of this to work to get the best out of Cyber Threat Intelligence. So that's it. We're done with the first episode of Introduction to Cyber Threat Intelligence. Thanks for joining. See you in the next video.